Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can hear okay, you. okay, thank you. Um, thank you for your, um, well, for the invitation to be here and for your kind introduction. Um, listening to you, I remembered um, uh, meeting you for the first time. Just a casual introduction uh, from Emeka, which um, as these things, these tentacles often do lead to who knows what and who knows when. Anyway, in response to um, the idea of, of talking a little bit now about um, things to do with history, um, relating to the, to the work we do, I've chosen uh, to call the few um, thoughts I put together, searching for your story. It refers not to any story that anybody may choose to tell you, uh, uh, with their work, but about the story that each person makes of their life. Employing history to make that story. History not as a blunt instrument that with its generalities often serve to reinforce prejudices and stereotypes, but as a tool to join specific landmarks on the journey that is your life. I'll set this context for this with a, with a short personal story. Two months ago, uh, my elder brother died. And in the days after his death, an online tribute um, site was set up for people who knew him to express their feelings about him. He had spent his life as a medical practitioner and so many of the tributes were from distraught patients and relatives of patients. Reading through the tributes, I was struck by a common thread that went through them, and that was his humanity. Here are a few of them. One said, my, my mother always felt better after visiting him. Uh, another, he was always available. He always had time to listen. He was uh, kind and generous. He never rushed me. He listened patiently. Um, he, was, he, he, he was modest man with a small ego, but the largest, warmest, generous heart. I say this to point out that as accomplished as he may have been in his craft, what endured, endured about him was his humanity. He was a doctor, teacher, husband, father, etc. But the thing that connected all of these and resonated with all those who knew him was him as a human being. To say this may sound trite and obvious, but I say it to make the point that it is important not to define yourself by, what, by the labels that society gives you or what you do, but by your humanity, the thread that connects us all, the thread that has got us all here listening today. History is, of course, a continuum. And we create history for and about ourselves every day. Whatever we learn along the way can be helpful to somebody else. And I think that an innate curiosity is the key to unraveling and navigating the markers along the way. An interest in discovery And, about, and, and everything about knowing is the key to, to I think, navigating your way through, through life. Many of you will, he will have heard of Mr. J.D. Ohai Ojekere, a photographer whose seminal work on Nigerian hairstyles hangs in art museums around the globe. But how did he write his intriguing story? from selling a photograph taken under a tree in a small village in Western Nigeria to selling in the world's major art destinations. He began his career with no mentors, no examples to emulate. But what he did have was a desire to know. I can imagine that had he been a young man in these internet days, he would have immersed himself in the plethora of online resources that exist today. In Western Nigeria at that time, he had none of these. 
However, he got a job in the Western Region Information Service where he worked and the chief photographer, Mr. Milton Macaulay, took pictures that in Ojekere's words, looked different from everybody else's. Ojekere's curiosity led him to ask what film and processing technique produced these distinctive images. Mr. Macaulay readily told him that I put a yellow filter on my Roliflex and that reduces the ultraviolet light that reaches the black and white film and increases the contrast between the colors without it looking unnaturally dramatic. OJ Carey was only one of several photographers working in that office, but he was the one who asked Mr. Macaulay, was told, and soon his images too began to distinguish himself from his colleagues. Later, while working for the Nigerian Council of, uh, the Nigerian Arts Council, a friend of his, the renowned sculptor Erabo Emakpai, suggested to him that as his assignments photographing festivals of arts and culture took him all around the country, he suggested he create a visual record of the cultural activities because in his mind, they were in danger of one day dying out. This seemed like a good idea, Mr. Ojekere said. And so he set about creating a record basically for posterity. This exercise, he said, planted the kernel of an idea of building a body of work in his mind. Several years later, he thought he would apply this to the fashionable hairstyles that he felt he was seeing less and less of often around Lagos um, and, and, and in Nigeria in general. So he set about a project of inviting prospective models and hairdressers to his studio in his spare time. Intrigued by the styles, he threw himself into experimenting with lighting and composition with the aim of creating the best images he could without any clear idea of an ultimate use for them. This continued for several years, and as the collection grew, he began to imagine the possibility of perhaps publishing them as a book. He showed them around, the, 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 he, he took these, these images in a portfolio around to cultural and academic circles, where more than one person was inspired by the topic and suggested that they could write this work as a, write a thesis on, on hairstyles and offered him photo credit if he would allow them to use his pictures as illustrations for their work. He felt that he had put too much work into this. And so he rejected all of those, those um, fraudulent ideas. Um, and his collection continued to grow for many more years without any clear end in sight. But this was something that, that had caught his imagination and he methodically continued. This was a personal project that ran in the background while Mr. J. Carey made his daily bread in the cutting edge fledgling commercial and advertising photographic industry in West Africa. The fortunate production of an art book of his hairstyles was facilitated by Mr. Tam Fiofori, a writer, filmmaker, and friend of his, who introduced Mr. Ojekere to a collector who had wide eyes and deep pockets. Mr. Ojekere's book, an exhibition in Paris, brought the attention of an international photo market to the possibilities that their story of the region had never factored in. If my memory serves me accurately, Mr. Macaulay, whose pictures inspired the young Ojekiri, has a series of exhibition prints today in the entitled These Are My People in the basement of the Schomburg Center in New York, where they have sat since the 60s, not really part of the, of, of the imagined history of what has come from Nigeria. I'm sure they will be discovered one day and be a, a, a wonderful discovery of, 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 of Nigerian artistic work. 
Mr. Jekere honed his craft through dedication to his work to such an extent that he thoroughly mastered his process. But if you ask, were to ask any of the hundreds of models, some known, some unknown to him who he approached and asked to do a fresh hairstyle and pose for him, I'm sure none of them who agreed would say they agreed because he was a talent, a talented photographer, but rather because he was a warm human being. And knowing him in the autumn, in his autumn years, his disarming smile, gentle and generous disposition, what you may call his humanity, made it easy for you to understand how he was able to write his story. Um, so that's sort of, the, those are the thoughts I, I, I put down um, um, regarding the idea of history, um, that we create our own history every day and we share that history. And the reaching forward to somebody else's history, we also lay down a track for somebody behind who will, who will reach, who, who will in turn reach forward to our history. And um, I think that the thread that unites all of this is a recognition that before anything else, we are all human beings. And if we tap into this common thread as human beings, um, whether you're a painter, a, a, a musician, a photographer, a doctor, um, whatever, your humanity is what will be this uniting um, thread that, that benefits us all. So I'm a bit, I think I'm only about half of my time, but perhaps this will leave us um, a little bit more time for discussion.